Hello, this is Trevor from Telecom Training, and today we're going to be talking about VDSL2 vectoring. Why do we need VDSL2 vectoring? Well, since the early days of the telephone line, we discovered an issue while transmitting voice on copper lines. This issue is commonly referred to as crosstalk. What is the cause of crosstalk? Well, whenever you speak on a telephone, you speak into the mic. The mic converts your voice to an analog signal like this one. Now, if you're speaking loud, the amplitude of the signal is high. If you're speaking low, the amplitude reduces to a low level. So the amplitude of the signal all depends on your voice. Now this signal is sent through the phone and on to the telephone line. Now the current on this line is quite dependent on the signal. Now if the signal is high, the current is high. If the signal is low, the current is low. So this constant change in current on the line causes an electromagnetic field to be developed external to the line. This electromagnetic field, which is developed externally to the line, is called crosstalk. Why is crosstalk a problem? Well, crosstalk is not a problem if there's only one line working on its own. But when there are more than one line within a cable, for instance, a cable usually have as many as 25 pairs of wires, and each pair is one line. So what happens when there's more than one line in close proximity to the other is we get crosstalk. And the reason this crosstalk happens is that this electromagnetic field, which is indicated by arrows here from line one, is generated into line two. This electromagnetic field causes noise. And this noise is in the form of a voice, this person's voice. And the louder they speak, the louder it will get. That is why we refer to it as crosstalk. And this person here will be able to hear this person speak. And the louder they speak, the louder the crosstalk gets. If this person at the bottom is speaking as well, um, and they're speaking loud, they will be able to hear them. Or if this person is speaking loud, the person at the bottom would be able to hear them. So crosstalk is constantly crossing over from line to line as a result of electromagnetic induction. What is the solution for crosstalk? Well, the solution for crosstalk is twisted pair. This is a twisted pair cable. This is just a matter of taking the two wires and twisting them together. In this diagram that we were speaking on before, this is straight wires. They're not twisted at all. Because they're not twisted, you are not able to cancel the crosstalk after the crosstalk is induced. So the crosstalk goes on to the user and the user would hear the crosstalk. Now with twisted pair, you're able to cancel the crosstalk. And the way this works is that, let's say there's a phone connected to the end of these two wires here and someone is speaking on this line, this line would continue to, to transmit an electromagnetic field that would induce a voltage into the parallel wire. However, if there's someone speaking on this line as well, they would not be able to hear this person speak as a result of the crosstalk because of the twists in this line. The twists is what stops the crosstalk. So anyone here speaking on these lines here, which as you see are drawn with twists in them, uh, these twists will stop the crosstalk. So these users here will not be able to hear each other. These arrows here indicate the electromagnetic induction which is sent out, but when it's sent out and goes into the wire, it is canceled by these twists in the wire. So users here should not be able to hear the crosstalk from the parallel line. On this slide, we are showing that we can not only send voice lines on twisted pair, we can also send high-speed internet lines. 
We have ADSL1, ADSL2+, and the VDSL1 line here. The difference between these lines that I want to sh show is that for a voice line, it operates between 300 hertz and 3.4 kilohertz. For an ADSL1 type line, in order to get 8 megabits per second, we have to operate it at a frequency of 1 megahertz. For ADSL2 plus line, in order to get 24 megabits per second, we operate it at a frequency of 2.2 megahertz. And for VDSL1 line, in order to get 50 megabits per second, we operate at a frequency of 12 megahertz. As I said before in the last slide, the differences between these services is generally the frequency. And as the frequency increase, so does the speed. Unfortunately, um, also does the crosstalk. So we can only use twisted pair in the traditional way right up to VDSL1 at 12 megahertz. For VDSL2 at 30 megahertz, in order to get 100 megabits per second, we're going to be using VDSL2 vectoring. As we said earlier, every line that is a changing current through, uh, we, get, uh, we get an electromagnetic field being generated. It doesn't matter if this is voice or data. And this electromagnetic field would induce a voltage into the parallel wire, which we call crosstalk. Now, the twisted pair is able to cancel this noise. In voice lines, DSL, in voice lines, ADSL1, ADSL2, ADSL2+, and VDSL1. But because but in VDSL2 lines like what we have here, because the frequency is so high, the crosstalk is extremely high with VDSL2 lines. So the traditional way that we use twisted pair to cancel crosstalk break down. And we are unable to use it at this point in order to get a high speed across the line because the frequency is too high, causing much crosstalk. So this is where VDSL2 vectoring comes into play. Now, as you see here, we're using VDSL2 vectoring on this particular line, and the speed has increased. On the last slide, I'll go back there for one second. On the last slide, you saw the speeds were 22 megabits per second with all the crosstalk we're having on the line here with no VDSL2 vectoring applied. On this line here, we're getting 75 megabits per second uh, with VDSL2 vectoring applied. Traditionally, once a voltage is induced from one pair to another, we would use twisted pair to cancel that induction, which we call crosstalk. With VDSL2 vectoring, we're able to neutralize the crosstalk before it exits the originating pair. So there's no crosstalk on any of the lines to worry about. So that's how we're able to get 75 megabits per second. So, so in the next slide, we're going to be talking about how crosstalk is neutralized before it leaves the originating pair. Here I'm going to use one DSL line connecting from the DSLAM to the modem to show you how VDSL2 vectoring work. On this particular DSL line, what I'm showing you here is before the VDSL2 vectoring is applied, you will see the crosstalk information from the line. Now, the process in order to get VDSL2 vectoring up working on the line, this is how it works. Now, each and every 64 milliseconds, 256 data frames are sent out from the DSLAM to the modem attached to the 256 data frames is a sync frame. And this sync frame is used to synchronize this data between the DSLAM and the modem. Now attached to the sync frame is one bit. And this one bit collects crosstalk information from the line. So any crosstalk on the line is collected within this one bit here. So all of this information is then sent off to the modem. The modem extracts the one bit of crosstalk information from the sync frame. 
and sends it back to the DSLAM. The DSLAM receives the one bit of crosstalk information. It does some in-depth mathematical calculations in order to formulate an injection of anti-noise specifically made for this line from its crosstalk information. Once the anti-noise injection has been formulated, it is transmitted on the downstream side of the line, stopping all crosstalk on this side of the line only. Now information sent from the modem back to the DSLAM for the purpose of VDSL2 vectoring is treated in exactly the same way. Now every 64 milliseconds, 256 data frames are sent from the modem to the DSLAM with a sync frame attached and modulated right on this sync frame is one bit. And this one bit is used to collect crosstalk information for the DSLAM. Now once this is all done, this information is sent off to the DSLAM. The DSLAM would extract the one bit and calculate an anti-noise injection for the receive side. Now once the anti-noise injection has been formulated, it is injected on the upstream side of the line, canceling all crosstalk. So now we have a line free of crosstalk. Once all VDSL2 vectoring requirements are met, there won't be any crosstalk on any of the VDSL2 lines. And all lines should operate at optimum speed. Hope this video was helpful to you. And if you would like to see more of our telecommunications videos, you can click on the subscribe link below so that you'll know when our new videos are released. My name is Trevor and thank you for watching.